Hey guys, Mrs. Heiser here with another art video for you. Today we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to learn about the artist Andy Warhol. Now Andy Warhol was one of the creators of pop art and I think you're really going to like today's lesson because you guys get to pick something from pop culture um, or popular culture where pop art got its name from. Um, so I drew a couple examples for you of artwork that you guys could create. Um, and I even, for my younger kids, maybe we're going to use something simple like a shape, like a heart. And for some of my older kids, you guys might want to draw something for this. Um, I know this is recognizable. My boys have been asking for Fortnite. I haven't gotten them it yet, but they really love it. And this guy, I know everybody knows, this is the Loot Llama. So just by one image, you can recognize it right away. And that's the important part of pop art. Same thing with this. This now would be my artwork, I'll show you. And this is the Chicago Cubs. So just by one image or a symbol uh, that's recognizable, we're gonna create some pop art together. And I'll show you mine that I started. So here's what I did. So we're gonna be basically printing one picture over and over again to create pop art like Andy Warhol. If you look at those pictures behind me, there's one of Marilyn Monroe, who was super famous back at the time that Andy Warhol did his work. And this one is actually of Andy Warhol himself, a self-portrait. And he used repetition and repeated it over and over and used some really fun and funky colors. Okay, so we're going to learn a little bit about him and then how to create your own artwork like him. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to show you a picture. This is a picture of Andy Warhol and you will notice his crazy crazy hair um he was really well known for wearing a lot of wigs um so when he got famous and he would go to parties and he'd meet people um everybody kind of thought he was a little wacky and and he'd wear these crazy wigs so that's one thing you might notice in some of his pictures he might have crazy hair that's really a wig okay um so this is um who helped develop pop art one of the best known and most fun periods of art ever i would say Okay, that's Andy Warhol. Um, you might see in the background here his Campbell soup cans. Now, if you see a piece of artwork like this, uh, it's one of his best known paintings. Um, and some of his best known paintings and prints are usually brightly colored like this. They have simple, strong shapes. So if I look at this, this looks like a cylinder, right? By using an oval and drawing those lines down and making a curve line at the bottom, it kind of creates a cylinder with simple shapes um, and they really stand out. He often showed things that were a popular part of everyday modern life, like supermarket products and rock stars. So this would be a supermarket product. We all recognize Campbell's soup. Now watch what he did to it. He changed it and he would make it really bright, fun colors. And look at that. Remember I said that fun word repetition? Here's the word for you, repetition. Repetition means to repeat something over and over again. So if you look here, all of these soup cans, he had tomato soup over and over again, but in fun, different colors. And he did this by using what was called printmaking. He didn't draw it that many times. He would print it with a screen printer, okay? And then he would go in and add those different colors with different screens of color. Same thing as those in the background, repeating them over and over. So we're going to come up with a fun way to print make at home without needing a screen or a printer. Okay, I'm going to show you some art magic. It's going to be really fun. He was also obsessed with famous people. So um, when he was younger, he actually got really sick and he would watch um, movies and he would read magazines. Um, he spent a lot of time in bed reading comics. And so he dreamed about becoming famous. So you might recognize this person or maybe not. It's actually Elvis Presley, okay? And he was obsessed with famous people. Now you see again, repetition. One, two, three. So he would screen print over and over, okay? That one has less color though, right? Uh, this one, I know you're gonna recognize. Da, 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 who's this guy? Mickey Mouse, right? So the pop artists were creating art about things and people and, and objects that were that people were familiar with um, and in their everyday lives, like Mickey Mouse and Elvis and Marilyn Monroe. Okay. Um, so that you could use for some inspiration for your, so pop art now might be a little bit different. So maybe you think of like a popular singer, 
um, or uh, an athlete or somebody that would be really recognizable, you could draw them for your artwork. Or like I showed you, maybe it's something from a video game like Fortnite, or maybe it is um, a character like Mickey Mouse. Okay, for our artwork, we only have, have to draw it one time and then I'm gonna show you how to print it. Now, this is a picture of Andy Warhol working at his studio. He actually had a studio and he called it the factory. It's kind of interesting because in the factory, he would actually have other people working on his artwork. So here's one of those big screens that I told you about. And, and you can see they're squeegeeing ink across these screens. And you can see this is a flower. There's one of his art pieces, or actually many of them, that are flowers in different colors. And you could see they would lay ink on here and they'd use these big squeegees to pull that ink across. And like a stencil, wherever that piece was, was where it would get the ink. So it was really interesting and fun. And they could repeat those then and move it over and over and over and make hundreds of prints at the same time. It's really neat. Okay, now here's a funky one of him in a self-portrait. So we have one, two, three, four Andy Warhols in a really funky print with really bright, bold colors. Okay, I think that says a lot about him. If you're in third grade at Tibbetts, you will have probably recognized these. He also did a series on endangered animals. So we have one of his zebra prints here. And if you look close, he's a lot of primary colors, bright colors, some cool line work here. And he did a whole series on those endangered animals that we were actually working on with our third graders right now. Um, so here's some of his endangered animal pieces. Okay. So for your project today, we're going to work on your drawing first. Okay. For your drawing, I want you to think of something simple that you could easily draw. Okay. That could be something like a logo. Okay. These are all recognizable McDonald's symbol, right? Google, the Microsoft symbol. You could use, or Disney I see over here, you could use the logo, okay? Or you could use a symbol. So a symbol, you know, we see this is like lady, a man, that's like for restroom signs. But a symbol could also be, um, you know, something like my Cubs logo. Um, I could use that as well, okay? Or maybe if you're a Brewers fan, I guess you could use the Brewers. Um, and we're gonna try that repetition that we talked about. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get my paper. You're gonna need two pieces for this project. One that you're gonna create your artwork on, that's this size, okay? Or I suppose you could use any size, just like this. And then we're going to be folding our second piece to come up with a piece that's this size right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna fold our paper in half, um, hot dog and hamburger way. Fold it in half the best that you can. Here's one fold and then I'm gonna fold it in half again just like that. Okay, almost creating like a little card. Okay, now I have my paper in fourths. Okay, and when I open this back up now I'll know exactly one fourth of my paper. Now these two should be the exact same size. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut or tear one of these pieces out to make your picture. So I'm gonna cut along this line and I'm gonna cut along this line and on here is where I'm gonna draw my artwork that I want to repeat over and over again. Okay, so this piece I don't really need unless you make a mistake and you need some more paper. But on here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw. So for mine, I drew a, a Cubs logo. So I started with the circle and then I started drawing his face the best that I could to kind of fill up that space. You want to fill up the space pretty well. Now, I also drew for my younger kiddos. If you want to do something simple like a heart, that would be really easy and fun to do. Okay. Now, the next part I told you about is some art magic. We are actually going to take our pencil and we're going to draw, we're going to kind of color the back of this. So I'm going to make sure I fill up where my lines are. You can kind of see through it. And I'm just going to color it in with my pencil. It doesn't have to be super dark, but I'm going to color it pretty well. And then what's going to happen when I go to put it down, I'm going to find my paper. And you only have to do where your lines are. So if I could see through this, I know my lines are covered. I'm going to set it down on my paper, like here. I already divided my paper into sections, um, so into four parts. You can see the lines going here and here. 
You could ask mom and dad for some help with this, or you could just trace this four times. Okay, and we're going to set this in this section right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to trace. I'm going to hold it still. You could tape it if you wanted to, but I'm just going to trace this heart. And what's going to happen is some art magic. On the other side, look what's happening. It traces my heart. It presses that carbon from your pencil down onto the other side. So it's kind of like making a print. And there I have another heart. Now I just have one more square to do. So I would set my heart right in here. Okay, I would match it up with my square, hold it down, and then I'm just gonna draw or trace, and you don't even need to redo that pencil, the carbon on the other side, because it's still there. So when I trace this, it's gonna show up just like that. So now I have four exactly the same hearts. They're all the same, okay? So that's exactly what I did for my piece with the Chicago Cubs logo. So on the back, you'll see I have those that uh, shaded and I used the carbon of my pencil. But for this one, I had to kind of fill the space up. It doesn't have to be nice or neat or anything because basically all you're doing is putting pressure on it to transfer that design. So you're coloring on the back side with your pencil, carbon, okay? I'm gonna set this guy down in that last square here, okay? Fill it right in that space. And I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna trace and that symbol will show up, or that logo, I should say, will show up on the other side. And then the fun part is coming up with adding color. What kinds of colors do you guys want to add? Think about the colors and the color scheme. Now this Cubs one that I drew here, and again, I'm just tracing carefully, so I need to make sure I get all my parts. I don't have to press too hard either, okay? This one I did with all Cubs colors. So I used red and white and blue, but I could make it really fun and bright, kind of like those ones back there, um, and make them all different colors. They don't have to be true to life. And for mine to color it, I used watercolors because I thought that looked the most like a Warhol print, okay? Um, because it kind of covered the space well. But if you don't have watercolors, and there we go, check it out. My fourth cubby here, okay? If you don't have watercolors, you could really use anything. I also took a Sharpie, if you have Sharpies, uh, and I just kind of outlined it so it would show up a lot better. So you could go ahead and outline your work, just like those hearts. If I'm done with those, I could outline them and come up with some really fun colors to, to paint them or color them in with. So you could use markers, you could use crayons, you could use watercolors whatever your choice to fill that space, whatever you have really. I thought watercolors worked the best, but again, you can choose, okay? After I'm done outlining, all I have to do is paint this last section and then my really cool pop art piece is complete, okay? Um, so again, think about something that's popular in culture now. It could be somebody or something famous. It could be a logo or design and then just draw your piece on one small piece of paper that takes up one fourth of this, okay? Color on the other side with pencil. Hold it in one spot. Make sure it doesn't move. Press down with your pencil and trace and move it to each section to do the same thing. And then have fun creating some pop art like Andy Warhol, okay? Should be a real fun one for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email or you could even write a comment on the video. Um, but I think this should be a lot of fun. And again, for my littler kids, do something simple. You could do a heart, you could do some other fun shape. Um, or if you wanna get more complicated and try something like Andy Warhol, think of things that you would see in the supermarket or in everyday life. He even sometimes did artwork like money. Here's a print of his money right here I was gonna show you to end. So he printed some money over and over and over again. Pretty cool. So have fun with creating some pop art um, and hopefully I get to see it on Artsonia if you publish it or share it with me. All right, 
I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.